tell me, would you like to meet someone who is unforgettable? My name is Zoe and my mom is January Jones. I have trained her to feed me, walk me, and even to pick up my poop. It hasn't always been easy with her, but I've managed to turn her into a perfect mom. She has some other kids, but I'm her favorite. I'm always glad to see her. I never talk back and I never whine or tell her what to do, unlike some others in our family. I'm as smart, as beautiful, and as perfect as her seven grandchildren. My mom has a radio show called January Jones Sharing Success Stories that is syndicated on iHeartRadio, Talkboard Media, and Blog Talk Radio. Mom interviews exciting, eclectic, and energizing guests from all walks of life. They will amaze, amuse, and astound you. But none of them are quite as cute as me. If I do say so myself, my mom is quite the character who wears many hats. Besides, her first career is my mom. She's an inspirational radio talk show host. She's an author, a humorist, as her book, Thou Shalt Not Wind the Eleventh Commandment, reached number one at Amazon.com. She's a Kennedy expert with Jackie, Ari, and Jack, the Tragic Love Triangle, and she's a motivational speaker with priceless personalities. Be sure to check us both out at www.JanuaryJones.com. We're looking forward to meeting you. Just remember, I'm Mom's favorite. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dallas Live. You heard Zoe talk about January Jones. Uh, Zoe, wel- uh, January, welcome back to our second segment. Oh, you're welcome. And isn't Zoe cute? <laughs> yes, and now is Zoe is a male or a female? She's a female. female she's okay. a female. She's five years old, and uh, she's just started talking, so I'm very proud of her. <laughs> oh, she, she, she just started talking, She already, and you already put her on YouTube, huh? Very good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's doing better on YouTube than I am. She's uh-huh. quite the personality. <laughs> uh, amazing. Very mm-hmm. good. So let's go back and uh, run through the list of books you have. Uh, Thou Shall Not Wine, The Eleventh Commandment, uh-huh. and Jackie and Ari and Jack, the, tri- the Tragic Love Triangle, now the third book is Oh No, Jackie O, and Christina, The Onassis Odyssey. Uh, the fourth book is Priceless Personalities, Success Stories Shared by January Jones. And the last one is Christi- The Christina, The Onassis uh-huh. Odyssey, Celebrities, Courtships, and Chaos. Right. Now, <laughs> now all this, now if somebody wants to get this book uh, signed by you, as a, an uh, autographed by you, I, uh, h- how do they go about doing it? Just send you an email and get your address yeah. and mail the book to yeah, you? Yeah, if they send me their uh, uh, the request and my email is januaryjonesinfo at gmail.com and um, in the subject line just put autograph request and we will arrange to send you an autograph book. Okay, very good. <clears throat> All right, now let, let's see what else we have here. Um Priceless, priceless personalities. You know, there are. Uh, mm-hmm. I was looking at that book, and uh, you know, there are quite a few. I think there are about ten chapters, and right. uh, wh- and uh, l- let's see, uh, Susanna Barlow, child of poly- polygamy, polygamist, uh, yeah, yes. polygamy. Yes. And, uh-huh. uh, th- and tell us about. Uh, you know, can you give our audience? You know, we won't go through all of it. We'll just go through one or two of these. Oh, oh, sure. Who is she, yeah, and well, uh, who is she, and why did you pick her up to put it in uh-huh. your sh- in your book? Yeah. Well, basically, uh, to give you an overview of the book, uh, Doctor R.C., the uh, book is ten interviews that were actually people who came on my show and shared their stories, and these were ten interviews that were just unforgettable. These were the people that uh, stayed with me. I thought about them after the show. I I knew I wanted to share them in a bigger way. And so we had these 10 interviews transcribed and put into book form. And actually, they're now going to be put into audio book form. So we will be, this will be coming out as an audio book within the next six months. It was a very uh, personal 
book because every one that I chose to have in the book were people that I really connected with on my show, and uh, I, I, I was honored to be able to share them. Susanna Barlow, she's the child of polygamy. She uh, was 23 out of 46 children. Her father, she had one father, and she actually had six mothers, and she had all these siblings, and she grew up in a polygamous household. She shares uh, her book, What Peace There May Be, is a fabulous book, and I recommend that highly to anyone who would like to learn more about polygamy. However, her story really isn't about polygamy, so to speak. Her story is about uh, child abuse and what happens when you have that many children under one roof and what she had to go through to break free and to become her own person. It's a, a, a saga. I mean, it just takes your breath away what she did. And then she turns around. Basically, she was uh, homeschooled, so she, she really got no education, what to speak of. And then she turns around and becomes this brilliant writer all on her own. And she has a gift for writing. She's got a a fantastic writing ability. And it's just an amazing story that she was able to come out of this plural marriage thing. And she's actually become a children's advocate for other children who are going through what she went through. Oh, pretty amazing. You know, I, I was remembering watching a movie, Woody Allen's movie. There was the, I, I forgot the name. He was married to Meryl Streep in that movie. Then they had a little boy. Uh-huh. And Meryl Streep divorces him and moves with her lesbian uh, lover. And uh, uh-huh. his son now has two mothers. And he says, well, most people cannot even survive one mother. I don't know how my son <laughs> is going to survive two mothers. Now, Susanna yeah. has to survive six mothers. Okay. Yes, she did. In the book, she only uh, she brought it down to three mothers because it would have just gotten insanely crazy with six mothers trying to figure it all out. But apparently there was the one mother who was like the uh, dominant mother, and she was very cruel to the children and very abusive. And uh, Susanna stood up to her, which was a very difficult thing to do. But she shares uh, just the story of what it's like to live as a child in that kind of environment. And the good news is that I was just thrilled. to find, When I got her book, I stayed up till 4 in the morning reading it because I, I couldn't put it down, and I wanted to know what happened to her. And what happened to her is a very happy ending. She did marry uh, another man who was part of the uh, uh group. However, he was a young man, and the two of them decided to be monogamous, and they have six children, and she's become a very prolific writer with a wonderful career, and he is very supportive of her. So it it does have a very good ending, but uh, as far as having the cards stacked against you, she had quite a difficult childhood. Oh, okay. Well, there is one other person just uh, uh, caught my attention. I know mm-hmm. the Second World War, uh, people are the greatest generations. Is that correct? Uh-huh, yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. Hugh, Hugh Aaron uh, is the author, CEO, and greatest generation. Can you tell about this, uh, this gentleman? Oh, yes. Hugh uh, has written several books about his war experience. He went to, he was in World War II, and he saved all of his letters that he wrote his mother, and then he put them into books. And so he has created uh, a, a history of what it was like to go through during the greatest generation and what these men had to do. I mean, they literally went to war. They weren't home for, you know, three or four years. And they, and they had it wasn't like now where you have the Internet and you can send uh, text and emails. Then people wrote letters by longhand. And it took weeks for these letters to go back and forth across the Pacific and the Atlantic to get to the families. So it's it's a very inspiring. Uh, his story is very inspiring, and he continue. He's well into his 80s, and he continues to write wonderful books. And he's very very active even at his age. 
Very good. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to January Jones, and uh, we are coming to the end of our second uh, second part. Uh, January Jones, please stay on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be coming right back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dallas Live. I am your host, Dr. R.C. You are listening to January Jones. Uh, January Jones is a humorist and winologist. Uh, she is a member of Association of Applied Therapeutic Humor. Now, uh, is that the membership actually exist, January? Yes, um, this is open to the public, and it's a group of humorists, uh, people that work with uh, uh, helping people through humor. And we have a lot of doctors, nurses, uh, writers, psychologists, uh, physical therapists. Uh, we have a group within uh, AATH uh, called the Caring Clowns, and they go to visit hospitals in clown attire. And it's it's quite an amazing organization. I've been with them for several years. Many of the guests on my show are members of AATH. Uh, actually, I'm doing an interview tonight with... Uh, Nicholas Hazel, and he wrote Laughter, the Definitive Cure. So we really do um, like to spread the laughter and good news to everyone that we come in contact with. So in, in order to become a member, do you have to be a stand-up comedian? Not necessarily. No. <laughs> no. Well, they wouldn't let me in if I if that were the criteria. All you need to do uh, to go and become a member is go to www.aath.org and go visit the website. You can uh, check everything out. As a matter of fact, they're getting ready to have their annual conference in April, and it's going to be in. I believe Indiana uh, at the Red Skelton Museum. Uh -huh. uh, it'll be uh, 100, 100 years anniversary of Red Skelton's birth. And so a lot of humorists go there, but you don't have to be stand-up at all. <laughs> uh, okay, you know, uh, my therapeutic humor that I get a dose every day is uh, Jay Leno <laughs> yeah. at uh, Tonight Show. So 
<laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, Dr. Uh, I mean, uh, Nick Hazel, he's on my show once a month, and his one book is Laughter, the Drug of Choice, and his other one is Just Desserts, J-E-S-T, Desserts. So I love interviewing him and sharing him with my fans. And basically, all you need to do to get into this organization is sign up, and then when you go to their meetings, you wear those big red um, styrofoam balls on your nose, you know, the clown nose. (laughs) (laughs) So we all show up, and you get a, a room full of people wearing clown noses, and guess what? The next thing we do is we all sit around and laugh. <laughs> pretty amazing. Well, yeah, pretty com- healthy. <laughs> right. Now, coming back to your um, thou shall not whine, um, uh-huh. how do you say, you, you say that how do you stop kids from whining? Smack them if you are not in public. That, that's, a, that's a good humor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, with children, uh, there's so many things that, you know, the issues for the top 10 things that children whine. They whine about going to bed, sharing, taking turns, waking up for school. They whine about their babysitters, taking a bath, homework. Uh, they whine about brushing their teeth. They even whine about where to sit in the car. Or my favorite wine is he's looking at me when their siblings <laughs> are looking at them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some of the wines for children are, some of the cures are basically the uh, because I said so cure. And I think you have to do that one and you have to do it in a very strong, dominant way. You have to become the alpha parent. Right. Uh, another wine is um, sharing. Sharing, uh, sharing is fun, and teaching children how to share and how to get together. As far as uh, taking turns, uh, sometimes you need to get really tough, and you need to give these children who are whining, you need to give them a timeout uh-huh. or uh, go to bed. <laughs> That's sometimes it. they're so miserable, you don't really even want to be around them. Right. Um, sometimes you can help them with bribery and, you know, I, I think it's psychologists probably would say this is terrible, but I have to tell you, there's probably not a parent in the world who hasn't used bribery to get their children to do something, uh, promise them a surprise. And it's amazing how they will, um, come around they whine about taking a bath and uh, you know that's part of the they were they're whining because it's the ritual of going to bed the bath comes before bedtime and so that's really what they're whining about uh when little boys get older we advocate that instead of taking a bath they teach them to take a shower and kids love to take showers girls and boys uh Another cure is uh, the threat with consequences. You know, you say, if you don't do this, then this is going to happen. And you have to get a consequence that they can relate to and one that cuts to the bottom of the problem and gets their attention. Um, Sometimes it just depends on each child. And as far as, uh, you know, where to sit in the car, I, I, we write in the book about the ultimate, ultimate cure, and that is control of the radio. When children are whining in the car. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, whoever has the control of the radio is the one who's the alpha personality. So you have to really uh, do a little manipulation with them. And sometimes they just whine because their siblings looking at them. <laughs> and that happens all the time. And we basically, for that whine, we said, put on your sunglasses and don't look at anyone. <laughs> <coughs> you know, um, whenever my son whines, you know, I, uh-huh. I threaten him saying that I'm going to send him to a boarding school. Oh, gee. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's so a consequence. That's, yeah. So, you know, he stops everything and he behaves. And he's, oh, yeah. he's 11 years old, and he's very afraid of going to boarding school. So uh, uh-huh. he, instead of, sometimes I use the bribery. Sometimes uh, when the things get really bad, I said, okay, it's time to go pack up your stuff. You're going to go to a boarding school. <laughs> and then things. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> that is definitely a consequence, and that definitely <clears throat> gets his attention, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, right, absolutely. Now, here is a problem, though, and I, I, I tried this. I, I told uh, some of my other friends who have children of the same age, when they tried it, <laughs> their children, oops, I'm sorry. Their children are ready to, p they're packing up their stuff, and they say, yeah, we are ready to go to boarding school. We, we love it. We don't <laughs> like it here, you know. <laughs> Okay, so that can go either way. Uh, it can go either <laughs> way. So they are saying, okay, we are ready to pack. We are going because we don't want to stay with you guys. You guys are too old. Yeah. We don't want to listen to you. Let me hang out with my friends. So that's oh, what yeah. so, so it, it meant it can go both ways. I was hoping that yeah. he didn't want to go and he will behave. Fortunately for my son, when I threaten him with this, he, he behaves. So, uh -huh. <coughs> But uh, other yeah. children, it would not work. So, uh, yeah, uh, well, children that are, you know, 11 years age, that's young for whining, you know, it gets really tricky when they become teenagers because uh. then it gets to be a, a, a bigger issue. Teenagers whine about uh, TV and computers, homework and grades. They whine about money or lack of money, curfew. They whine about driving, dating, popularity. Uh, they whine about their weight. Mm -hmm. their zits and blemishes, and also peer pressure. So it gets a little more complicated when you step into the teenage eight, uh, years. That's true. And uh, as with a teenager, you cannot be a paper tiger. You cannot just threaten them and then not follow through with it. So you have to be careful what kind of threats you are going to use. Uh, oh, and, yeah. And if you cannot oh, follow yeah. up, then they know you are a paper tiger and you are not going to do anything. All mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. uh, right. Let's uh, let's get back to your uh, two two other questions on the thou shall not wine. That is, mm -hmm. uh, what are the favorite cure for men and women? I think they are separate. They are, th they are different, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Well, for men, the favorite cure for women uh, for men is when a man is whining. You basically uh, try to distract them. <laughs> 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 and you know, and we found that the best way to distract men from whining <laughs> is to ask them this is serious. This is just ask them basically how their sports team is doing. <laughs> <laughs> how stupid these men are, huh? Okay. Yeah, and once you say how's your sports team doing, then all of a sudden they're, they, you've completely diffused the situation and then all of a sudden you've got their attention and all of a sudden they stop whining because all they want to do is really talk about their sports team. <laughs> ah, well, there's only one problem. Then the women has to start whining because they can't hear the sports talk at all. Y yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the best care for women in our book is called The Get Over Jackie Kennedy Cure. And for women, um, it's interesting. They speak over 7,000 words a day, and men speak only 2,000 words. I'm always amazed at this statistic. Uh, so can you guess who would do the most whining? So I'm not sexist, but when you've got 7,000 words a day to spout, there's going to be a lot of whining. And I think a lot of women owe the, a lot of their misery and whining to Jackie Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> because she was such a magnificent first lady. We all admired her. And unfortunately for most of us, she was an idol that none of us could touch. She lived the fantasy life, or so we thought. Right. <clears throat> Even her tragedies were magnificent. And she not only married two of the most powerful men in the world, but she was a world-class shopper. She oh, wrote yeah. the book when it came to spending your husband's money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so we say in order to get over your womanly whining for once in all, you have to get over the Jackie. And you have to start thinking in terms of real women who are out there on the front lines. Uh, people like Eleanor Roosevelt, Condoleezza Rice, Hillary Clinton. You may not agree with their politics, but you have to agree that their intelligence far exceeds their beauty. And they, we need to identify with real women, the ones who are out there doing it, instead of fantasy women, in order to become our real self. Absolutely. You know, 7,000 words versus 2,000 words. I mean, the ladies, the statistics <laughs> is very clear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, all the whining that women do, we just go ahead and blame Jackie Kennedy, and that's the end of that. Now, oh, yeah, I think that's an easy solution. <laughs> yeah, it's all Jackie Kennedy's fault. 
Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Now you are also talking about chocolate cure. What is chocolate cure for women? Oh, well, you know, I'm a chocoholic, and uh, I think that chocolate's the answer to everything. So when people are whining or having a difficult time, whether it be older people in a convalescent home or people in the playground, all you have to do is offer them a piece of chocolate. And guess what? They stop whining. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> for me, for me, chocolate is the universal cure for whining. Once you bring chocolate into the equation, uh, the whining stops and people become happier. Okay. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to January Jones, a fascinating personality and fascinating books. The five books are, oh, no, Jackie O, uh, Jackie, Ari, and Jack, a Tragic Love Triangle, Thou Shall Not Whine, Priceless Personalities, the Christina. These are the five books available at Amazon.com and also as a Kindle version, I would imagine. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we need to take a quick break. And uh, Christina, um, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. And January, please uh, stay on the line. Okay. On a warm summer's evening train bound for nowhere met up with the camera we were both too tired to sleep so we took turns of staring out the window at the darkness the boredom overtook us and he began to speak he said son i've made a life out of reading people's faces and knowing what the cards were by the way they held their eyes so if you don't mind my saying i can see you're out of aces for a taste of your whiskey i'll give you some advice so i handed him my bottle and he drank down my last swallow then he bombed a cigarette and asked me for a light and the night got deathly quiet and his face lost all expression Said if you're gonna play the game, boy You gotta learn to play it right You got to know when to hold up Know when to fold up Know when to walk away And know when to run You never count your money When you're sitting at the table There'll be time enough for counting When the dealing's done Every gambler knows that the secret to surviving is knowing what to throw away, knowing what to keep. Cause every hand's a winner and every hand's a loser. And the best that you can hope for is to die in your sleep. And when he finished speaking, he turned back toward the window, crushed out a cigarette. darkness the gambler he broke even but in his final words i found an ace that i could keep you got to know when to hold them know when to fold them know when to walk away and know when to run you never count your money when you're sitting Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dallas Live. I am your host, Dr. R.C. You are listening to January Jones. Uh, one of her books is the uh, um, Jackie, Ari, and Jack. Um, um, uh, January, welcome back to our last segment. Oh, it's wonderful to be with you. I'm really enjoying this interview. We're having a great time. <laughs> All right. Now, it is uh, something that I did not know. You, uh -huh. In your book about JFK, uh, uh -huh. uh, when Jackie uh, lost her, had a miscarriage of her first baby, 
Mm -hmm. And you are saying that uh, that was uh, a result of an affair with uh, the actor William Holden. Uh, tell yeah. our audience. Uh, tell our audience how did this come about? Because this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Well, you know what happened is one of the Auchincloss uh, sisters revealed this after uh, many years had gone by, and that apparently. Jackie, you know, everyone thinks, well, Jack cheated and Jack kind of did all this horrible stuff to her. Well, you know, the reality is they had basically a politically arranged marriage. And so they both did different things. And however, the difference was Jacqueline was very, very discreet about her relationships and what was going on in her private life. And the unfortunate part for her was that Jack was not that way. He was blatantly uh, uh, sexually active in front of everyone, and he brought women in and out of the White House. Everyone knew about it, and it was very embarrassing for her. So she basically uh, left, and she went to their place. Uh, they had a, a house where she went hunting, and she basically stayed there Monday through Thursday, she would come back to the White House when there were official things that she had to participate in. But it was hard for her to go to the White House because the staff, everyone there knew what was going on. The Secret Service knew what was going on. It was pretty um, humiliating for a young, attractive woman to have to endure that in her own home. Oh, okay. So you are saying that uh, Jackie... Kennedy was uh, very discreet, whereas uh, President Kennedy was not. But uh, apparently, since 19, since his death in 1963, until uh -huh. up to say 1980s, the American public did not know anything about his affairs. Correct? No, oh, I know there was just this code uh, between the people that it's certainly not like it is today. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today it would have <laughs> been a disaster for him. He never would have lasted as president today. But back then people never talked about or wrote or shared this with the public. You know, the people on the East coast knew what Jack was all about. And some of the celebrities on the West coast knew, but people in middle America did not have a clue Everyone just bought this uh, Irish Catholic family with lots of children, and no one suspected what was going on, and the news media did not report it. There was just this code of silence, and they basically did the same thing with FDR. They did it with Eisenhower, and they did it with other presidents, too. It was just uh, you, did, you never spoke about it. It was never... Uh, out in the public so no one had an idea people's private lives then were really and truly private well now you know they certainly aren't now based upon your uh, knowledge did mm -hmm. Mar marilyn monroe did she ever visit white house oh yeah 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 um you know and everything i've put in my books i've researched uh everything has been in public domain this has all been said before, published before, uh, and I'm not saying or bringing out anything that wasn't ever out there. The only thing is I've put the pieces together in a, in a different sort of way. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, yeah, she had a, a relationship with Jack Kennedy, and she also had a relationship with Robert Kennedy. And she really thought she had a chance to become uh the first lady because you know this is a woman who married joe dimaggio and then she married um the writer uh arthur miller so she was in her mind it was not impossible for her to become jack's wife however uh it was never going to happen right and she had uh she had tried to contact i guess apparently she had made contact with jackie at the white house you know jackie basically said good luck <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. if you want them you can have them <laughs> really? but but it never happened and uh Marilyn uh, died uh, under very uh, mysterious circumstances. Right. right. And the problem the Kennedys had with Marilyn wasn't that she said she had an affair with them because they could basically just say, well, she's a, 
you know, a delu- delusional, sick, sick woman and deny it and, and no one would believe it. The problem they had with Marilyn is that she had been privy to a lot of things that were going on in Jack's life and the White House and with the uh, gamblers and the mafia. And all. she was privy with Frank Sinatra to a lot of information that would give her credibility. So they basically didn't want her uh, c- uh, to start talking about this relationship. And she threatened to do that before she died. Yeah, you know, but you don't uh, threaten the president of the United States or or the attorney general. You know, it doesn't doesn't work. Even today it won't work. But uh, it's very, yeah. very tragic. Yeah. Uh, that's also another tragic scenario there. Yeah, yeah. And she was just... Uh, Uh, a beautiful talented actress but she was a very insecure woman and she uh, her choice of men and relationships uh were just disastrous for her personally for her career and for her personal life she was a very sad 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 woman all right ladies and gentlemen you are listening to january jones she is our featured guest but she is also a featured host on many different programs So, January, how long uh, did it take you to become a featured host? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I started out, oh, about three years ago, and I did a half-hour show once a week. And uh, basically, uh, my show is called January Jones Sharing Success Stories. And yeah, go ahead. Well, hold on one second. I think we lost her. Let's see. Let's play some music and let, let me see if I can get her back. I can't remember when you were there When I didn't care anyone but you I swear we've been through everything there is can't imagine anything we've missed can't imagine anything the two of us can't do through the years you've never let me down you've turned my life around the sweet Hello, I, I lost you. <laughs> All right, very good. We are back again. Ladies and gentlemen, you are oh. listening to January Jones. I just played some <laughs> music uh, while you are off. Um, <laughs> <Okay. let's>, uh, <laughs> All right, no problem. Let's get back to uh, what we were talking about. So how did you become featured host? That was my last question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I started off doing a show, uh, January Jones Success sharing success stories 30 uh, minutes once a week, and we now are on three uh, times live with 14 replays, and the show is now syndicated at three networks and played 60 times a month. So there's a lot of airtime out there for my fans. Okay, so w- what do you prefer, uh, radio show hosting or writing books? <laughs> wow, that's a tough question. You know, uh, it's gotten to the point now where I, I love doing the radio show because it gives me the opportunity three times a week to meet three people who are amazing, interesting, uh, sharing their stories, their struggles, their secrets for success. Uh, so it's very, uh, it's very energizing. All of my guests, they amaze, amuse, and sometimes they even astound me. So it's very, uh, I get a lot of uh, adrenaline from doing the radio show. Absolutely. Uh, intellectually, I adore words. I love reading. I love books. I love the process of editing and writing and putting it together. I get a, a lot of pleasure. Actually, It's a hard call. I love both the radio show and I love being a writer. You know, uh, recently you reached 1.8 million uh, listeners <laughs> yeah. mark. Now tell us, I mean, uh, that's a huge accomplishment. 
Yes, isn't that amazing? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, that's the uh the the blessing and the gift of the internet. I mean, once you get on the internet, it just word kind of spreads and exciting things start to happen and you get a lot of uh, wonderful uh, support and listeners, and it just is a very encouraging experience. I love uh, doing the internet. I, I used to do radio in Los Angeles, and you know, that was a big deal. You had to go to the studio, you had to have an engineer, producer, and it was a, a lot of uh, complicated uh, relationships. And now you can just go on the internet, as you know. And do your radio show, so it's it's a much uh, simpler, more enjoyable experience. Okay, so then, what uh, advice or uh, suggestions you have for a budding, beginning beginner radio show host like me? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, basically, my advice is that you just have to get out there and do it, and you have to. Uh, Invite people on the show who are um, uh, energetic ex and ec eclectic. You have to have an eclectic mix because that makes for good radio. Right. People like to hear about different people. And uh, basically promotion, 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 and networking. Now that's the big thing on the Internet. You have to network with a lot of people. And if it's your passion... It, you will do well. It's uh, an interesting, uh, it has to be something you love doing so much you would do it for free. Excellent. Yes, you are right. Now, you know, you talked about eclectic and, you know, reading through your uh, subject matter of these five different <laughs> books, your interests are <laughs> yeah. also eclectic. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you have any, <laughs> do you have any regrets? Oh, regrets. Well, I look back on some of the things I did as a callow youth, and I could have been a kinder, nicer person when I was growing up. But that's part of growing up. Um, regrets, I think most uh, regrets, you want to just uh, use those as things that help you become a better person. Uh -huh. Correct. Absolutely. Now, you have written about these uh, people of success, you know, the success stories. Uh, personally, what does uh, success mean to you? Well, it actually means, to me, success means finding your passion, something that you're passionate about doing. And it's very important for your passion to be something that is a service to other people. I feel that my radio show is a service in that we share success stories we share encouragement, we share information on how to be successful, and we share inspiration. And if you can find a passion that serves other people's, uh, people, that will, that will uh, ensure that you're successful. And it's, it's a, basically a pretty simple formula, but it takes many, many years to figure out. It's what you give, uh, what you put out there comes back to you. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to January Jones. Uh, she is, uh, of, after all these things that she talked about, I forgot to mention, she is also a cruise ship speaker for the Norwegian <laughs> Cruise Line. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when are you going? <laughs> when are you planning to go on the next cruise? Uh, cru cruise uh, anytime soon? Uh, well, you know, I it's on my agenda, but everything, my calendar is so full with doing the show and uh, whatnot. My last cruise, I was I did the Alaska cruise on Norwegian Cruise Line. Fabulous experience. I highly recommend cruises, uh, especially for family vacations, because cruises are a great way for a family to uh, be together, and yet everyone does their own thing. So uh, if you can, go on Norwegian Cruise Lines. <laughs> oh. Okay, we will do that. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to J Jackie Jones. Jackie, thank you so much for joining us and uh, offering us the one hour of your precious time. Uh, and also, there are five books, Thou Shall Not Wine, Jackie Airy and Jack. Oh, no, Jackie O, the Christina, the Onassis Odyssey. The fourth book is Priceless Personalities, and the last one is the Christina. Uh, all the books are available at um, Amazon.com and wherever the books are sold, and uh, perhaps... Uh, 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 January, are they available on Barnes & Noble? 
Uh, yes, you can get them there, and uh, also uh, at my website. If you go there, there's a direct link, and if people sign up at my website, www.januaryjones.com, you can download for free the first two chapters of Priceless Personality. Excellent. Very good. Uh, January, thank you so much again, and uh, we will be right back. Uh, January, please stay on the line, and the number to call for the next show is 469-307-1642. We will be right back.